Hello, everybody. This is the CT Sports Talent Show. My name is Christopher Saunders, and I'm pleased to have on a Staples record, as you know, I've had on many, many record uh, records rather throughout uh, my time doing this podcast. Uh, a wide receiver and a safety, also a lax player as well. Sam Petrosino. Sam, I appreciate you coming on, man. Thank you for having me. You know, it's awesome to be able to have, obviously, the amount of records that I've had on throughout the now multiple years of me being able to do this podcast, but every single one has always had a very intriguing story from the lax to the football to basketball as well, and so on and so forth. Um, before we get into your time with Staples, I know in talking with one of the assistant coaches, as he was giving me a bio about you and such, he mentioned how you grew up watching Staples as a young kid and that you were always striving to be like, you know what, one day I'm going to be under these lights and performing amongst what has been so many very talented uh, football players to don the record uniform. Uh, just kind of talk to me about that a little bit. Yeah, so I moved here my, before my kindergarten year. So I've been like in the program around Westport for basically my whole life. So mm -hmm. growing up, I, every game, like I just remember I, I, my dad would take me. It'd be a lot of fun. I remember I was the first uh, game where Staples had lights. So the first Friday night light game I was at, and it was just so cool. It was like surreal that I'm like now playing under those lights. You know, it's it's crazy that you say that at one point Staples did not have lights, because when I think about and again, a lot of people would say, oh, well, a town that has, quote unquote, a good amount of income coming in, they should have lights. But let's be honest, it's expensive and there's a lot of factors with that, too. And I'm sure it was a massive, massive deal. Um, when the lights came about, because that kind of opens up, because let's be honest, right? There's a difference between playing at what, probably three, three thirty yeah. no lights and then playing under the lights at 7 PM. Right. Yeah. My, my favorite games are when we play at home under the lights, like you, it, does, it doesn't get better than that. Was there any players again? I know I'm asking when you were young, so you may not remember, maybe you do, um, what there, you know, was there any players that you watched as a young at the time before you even knew a young record where you kind of admired their game? Um, I remember growing up. It, it's actually funny now because Coach Maddie coaches us now, yeah. but I was at his last ever like high school game in Greenwich, uh, his senior year. I remember uh, like him, uh, Coach Connors that they, they won that game, and that was like that was really cool. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, I like watching um a lot of uh, those when we had those big two tight ends, Blake Runkel and uh, Ryan Fitton. Those kid, those guys were fun to watch. When you were coming through the pipeline at Westport and kind of going through the Pop Warner and all that, right? Um, what were the expectations like? I mean, I know in talking with Coach Maddie, he was telling me how you know a lot of people may overlook you because of your size but there's a lot of things that should not be overlooked. The work ethic, obviously the dog that you got in you, right? Um, is that something that you kind of dealt with, kind of maybe people overlooking you or maybe putting you in positions that just because you're small, you could go there, but it's like, no, I can play these positions because I have it. Does that make sense? Yeah, honest, yeah honestly, I, I've been undersized my whole career in football. So I've always had that mentality, like, you gotta be tougher because if you, you're gonna get knocked down you gotta get back up and I've kind of used that this year to be like I've put on a lot of weight to so that I'm not the smallest so it's it's been nice to be like more the the forcer now was weight something because I know unless this has changed I know coming through as a young football player if you don't make weight I think you can't play or something like that because you have to you know it's a requirement depending now maybe that has changed was that a problem for, you know, a, a, a problem rather for you when you were uh, growing up playing? I wouldn't say so. I was, I've been always like short and stocky. So my weight's been fine. It's just make up for it with my, my height. I didn't have. So before you got to Staples, I'm sure you went to many, many games, obviously under the lights and whatnot. Um, what was it like watching the games from behind the fence, knowing that you were a year away from being at the high school? Yeah, it was crazy. I remember um, like sixth, seventh grade, we'd all be behind like the fence playing like pick, pick up football behind the scoreboard. And now you see that when you're playing now, it's, it's so cool to see. Eighth grade was a little weird just because they were playing over at Norwalk because our field was getting redone. And it was it was a rough year for them. They went two and eight, which it, it was hard 
to be like a Staples fan at that time. Mm. And then coming to the program, like you, we basically, we talk about leaving the program in a better place than we entered it. So I'm, I was, ent- I entered it, it was two and eight. And uh, I just kind of took a, I got took it under the wing by like kids like Henry Beck, Tyler Clark, George Angles. I was going to say Clark, who I've had on my podcast. I also remember Beck as well. Um, you know, they mentioned kind of, you know, Clark mentioned the same thing as you trying to leave the program in a better spot than when, you know, when they came in and try to carry on the legacy. And what you guys were able to do last year, going nine and one, losing a very close game to, I think, Greenwich, I think it was 23, 22. I made off on the score. If I am, I apologize. But, it was Fairfield prep in the playoffs. Oh, oh prep. I apologize. Yeah. My apologies. Fairfield prep. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> but to be able to do that, right. Being nine and one in the FCAC is awesome. And then getting to, especially in class double L, you lose one game, you could potentially be out of the playoffs because just how tough it is. And to lose a close game to Fairfield Prep, a very, very good team in the SEC, you know, it it kind of in some ways, it's like, you you, you know, you're glad you got there. But then at the same time, it's like we came so close. And now that fire, I'm sure, is really kind of brewing within the program. Like we have unfinished business. What says you? Oh, definitely. Uh we felt like we accomplished a lot last year after a couple of rough years, not making the playoffs. So we're like, we were happy with what we accomplished, but the reality is the season ends one of two ways it ends in that championship dog pile celebration you can say you went out on top and then it either ends in the other way, mm-hmm. just utter like heartbreak where what happened against prep, we lose the game seasons over like that. When you were kind of coming through, right? Because like you said, you know, you're going into your senior year. This is a big year. Junior and senior year are massive for a multitude of reasons. Um, and knowing kind of the players that were in front of you at the time, we talked about Beck, obviously Clark, Clark being one of the best wide receivers to ever don a Rutgers uniform. Um, do you feel like in a lot of ways, now I've always believed everything happens for a reason. And I'm not saying the opportunities were not there. You did a lot. You produced a lot on the field to be able to help this team win. Um, do you feel like being behind those players, and I don't mean that in an insulting way, but being behind them allowed you to kind of pick up some things from them to add to your toolbox? Does that make sense? Totally. I remember I would just honestly, when Tyler was he was captain last year, just watching him, how he led. And I remember at the end of the year, I would like what I took out of that is like, he was he was a great leader because he he didn't care what you thought about him in the moment because he knew at the end like you're gonna understand why he was doing what he would what he did. Mm-hmm. So I've been I've been using that how uh, for this summer how I'm, I've been leading. What um what has been the biggest I guess key to your without revealing too much your own personal game? What is something that you've been trying to fine tune to make sure that it's it's at its best. Uh, I guess, spot, right, when the season starts week one? Definitely my endurance. Uh, like as of now, I'm playing both ways. So I just want to be able to come fourth quarter. I'm not drained. I'm able to close out the game, finish the game, make the play if the team needs me to make the play. Now, I know in my times of broadcasting in the NVL, and again, the NVL is kind of old style. Now, there has been a little bit more of throwing the football with a couple teams, but not as much. But I know in, in terms of the wide receivers, and this is by no means no insult, but the route combinations, there's not a lot with them because throwing the football is not a big thing. Ground and pound, three yards in a cloud of dust. FCAC, it's a little different, especially for the Rutgers, for Staples. You guys like to throw the rock and everyone likes to be able to get their catches. Um, have you tried to also improve your wide receiver uh, grouping, you know, your tree a little bit to kind of add a little bit more as the season progresses as well coming up? Definitely. I, I didn't play much receiver last year. I started the season in a club on my left arm because I broke it. So I, I didn't play much receiver till the Greenwich game and uh, a little bit in prep. So this offseason, I've I've been working on just the routes that I, I need to be able to run come fourth quarter while I'm tired. So just conditioning and then doing receiver work. So before you went into the position of receiver last year, did you play your previous two years or no? I got like some, I got some reps uh, my sophomore year. I'd come in at receiver, didn't play much defense. I, I didn't play really much defense until my junior year because there's really no, nowhere else I could have gone with the club. So, mm-hmm. 
Do you think having that injury kind of allowed you? Because I've always heard from athletes who are injured, right? That they're able to see the game. Because when you're on the field, you're, you know, you're thinking about obviously, okay, if you're playing defense, what's the wide receiver? Where's he going? Where's he shifting? What's the quarterback defensive all like you have so many things going in your head. Um, do you think having that injury kind of allowed you to kind of sit back and see the game from a different light? Yeah, I going to the season, I really didn't look at it from a defensive standpoint. So when I got injured, I was told, hey, like it, when you come back, you're going to have to play safety. I was I was ecstatic because I just wanted to come back and play. And um, I was able to just take more of a, a defensive approach to the season, which I nearly got in pr prior seasons. Now, did you have the club on you when you came back when you were playing defense or no? Yeah, I played it for two games. It, it was it was actually it was a lot of fun. I was going to say, because I remember, because I played, again, different sport, but when I played soccer and I broke my arm when I was a young kid I and I played defense, you can use that thing kind of like not as a weapon. I won't say that, but you can use it as an advantage because it kind of, you can do some things. Did you use it to your advantage on defense? First game was hard because I remember I took like one tackle and I was, my arm was killing me. So I was like, that, that, that really hurts. And then, uh, we played Newington next week and I still had it on and I'm like, Oh, this feels more comfortable, comfortable. And I was able to like come in and like punch with it, like punch at the ball with my club. And it felt a lot, a lot better. I see D linemen do that all the time with clubs. Yeah. You know, when you're watching NFL games, you just seem swinging the club because they're trying to hit the football out, you know? Yeah. So as we head into this season, right. And there's obviously expectations. I'm sure people in Westport are thinking, okay, nine and one last year, we lose in, you know, the the quote unquote first round, the quarterfinal uh, against prep, and it was a close game. But you want to be able to try to replicate that. Well, there's going to be some new faces. Obviously, Clark is gone. You're going to have a much more defined role and more expectations as well. And also, Maddie told me you're a captain as well for Staples. So just kind of tell me about uh, what you know what it's been like during this off season for you and the team. I mean. It was awesome being named captain by my teammates. It meant a lot to me growing up. I like growing up watching the games. You look at the captains, like you know who they are. And uh being chosen by my teammates, it like made me like realize that like they, they view me as a leader. Mm -hmm. So just being a captain isn't a title for us. It's it's a job and it's a 24-7 job where we're working with Coach Maddie with just what we can do to help this team bring it to the next level. Mm -hmm. So I would say we've been Summer lifting is it's been going great so far. Our team, we look we look really good so far. Is there any and you may be too young to know about the series Hoover, which was Hoover football, and it was back on you know MTV years ago from Hoover, you know Alabama, great high school football program, and they were on for a couple of years, and their captains were kind of like celebrities within the town because obviously football was their bread and butter. It was God or was football than God for them. And I'm sure Westport is pretty close because football is beloved there. Um, do you feel like being captain amongst the rest, is there any sort of kind of celebrity that comes with that? I wouldn't say so. I feel like everyone on our team needs to be a leader. So there's no one being put on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I feel like I try to do as much as I can. When we have clinics for the youth, I try to show up to every clinic along with a lot of players just, just to build that that bond inside a community. Cause I remember growing up when, when the players would come to the camp, it was, it was the coolest thing ever. Like getting coached by someone who's catching touchdowns on Friday night. Like. I want to go back to the off season. Cause you mentioned that. And I think it's, it's huge because uh, I've always believed that you, you can't lose game. You, you know, you can't win games in the off season, but you could very well lose them because yeah. you know, every day you don't get better. The opposing team you're playing week one, two and three probably is more often than not. Um, do you think that plus last season, plus to even add more fire to you, right? Is that you've been overlooked and because of your height, does that kind of keep that motivation, that fire burning? Totally. Our, our motto this off season is off season is find the point. We lost by one point last year. We got to find that point every day of what, what, why did we lose? Where'd that point go? Cause it could have gone into a play. We could, we could look through the film on that game say, oh, we lost in that play. But in reality, we lost it in the offseason. Someone could have taken a rep off, and that's that's where that point is. So we just go day by day, find the point. What can you do today to get a point? 
as someone who's been around the FCAC now for a couple of years and you see the talent from the Greenwiches, you know, from the Ludlows to the Wards and so on and so forth, I can go on and on and on the FCAC. Um, do you think going against that talent, you know, I've always believed, again, to go back to that, that in the FCAC especially, if you can get to the playoffs, no matter the sport, especially playing in the FCAC, it's like you're prepared, you're ready to go because it's so tough. What says you? Yeah, I feel like being class double L, though, we have, we play a lot of top teams from the SEC. Like, we start week one against West Haven. They're going to be a very good team, they're, although they're not in the FCAC. So we don't really overlook any opponents really outside the FCAC. We just straight-headed, whoever's next, we game plan for, no, no different than the other. How awesome is that to be able to, and the NVL has not been able to do this yet, and I wish they would, but, you know, that's another, that, you know, another conversation for another day. Um, but I love the the inter squad almost or quote unquote, but being able to you know crossover games. That's out of conference, yeah. Yeah, to be able to play against opposing teams not from within <laughs> your conference, but you know to go outside to play the West Havens. You know, you mentioned Newington last year, part of the CCC. To be able to do that, I mean, I I didn't play football, so I can't speak on it. But for you and the team, that's got to be a pretty cool thing. It was really cool last year when we went uh we went up to Newington, never really been up there. And uh on, on this the feeling was it was on it was so cool. Like the grass field, the lights were like right the fans were right on the field. It it was it was definitely a memory of last year. It was playing on that Newington grass field. We all loved it. Yeah, grass is fun, unless it rains like it did yeah. a couple days ago where we have four inches of rain and you, you, you know, you walk and it's like you're kind of running through a pool, right? Yeah. Now, you know, I, I speak about the rain because I think that's a huge factor. And I'm sure during your trainings and I'm sure you train every single day. Um, were you out during that rainstorm yourself? Were you training in that or did you say, no, I want to wait until after it's done? Today? No, no. A couple of days ago, uh, we had about five feet of rain. Oh, no, we had uh, we had morning lifts in the morning, so we got those done. That's smart. That's smart. Stay away from the rain. Wait until it's over. Smart move. We also have access. Uh, it's nice so that we have access to like a field house mm. in our schools, so we're able to run up there if we if there's thunder outside. That's awesome. That's good to hear. You know, Sam, I really appreciate you coming on. A lot of fun being able to talk with you about records football. Um, really quick before I let you go, uh, expectations for yourself as we head into the 2023 uh, football season. I, I just really want to win a state championship for the team, for the community. Nothing else? Nothing for you? Nothing? I, I'd be satisfied with the state championship. You don't want first team? You don't want FCAC? You don't even care? I about mean, that? definitely. Definitely first the first team. All those those would be awesome. But end goal is definitely a state championship. Selfishly, for, be selfish for one second. All one, right. What are you, and I'm sure you're not big into your numbers. Maybe you are, and I could be wrong. But what if, if, okay, I'll put it to you this way, right? Because this, I'll, I'll, I'll circle it into the team. If Staples is going to be successful with the help of you, what are you going to have to do numbers wise and on the field and off the field to help this team get what you said, which is a ring? I would say most important is be a leader to elevate those players who started for the first year. We have kids like Nathan Smith who, Brothers with Caleb Smith, the quarterback. It's just gonna be his first year starting and he's he's looking really good. So just having him building that confidence with him and another kid, Jake McGeehan, who play big roles on the team would be it's it's gonna help a lot to win a state championship. And honestly, just being able to go all four quarters both ways is gonna help a lot for us. Sam, I really appreciate you coming on. Best of luck this season and uh Enjoy the rest of your summer because football season is going to be here just like that. Thank you for having me. No problem. Now, wrap things no up problem. on the CT Sports Town Show. So, until next time, stay safe. Our CT stands with Connecticut Town. I'm going to find them all. Do their shit, everybody, and be well.